Hello, my name is Ryan Warnowski. I am the producer of an interdisciplinary team from Ball State University's innovative Center for Emerging Media Design and Development graduate program. In collaboration with PAWS Inc., our team was challenged to evaluate and envision the future of, Professor Gar of the Professor Garfield website through research that examines the context of use among the three core stakeholders, teachers, children, and parents. After several months of conducting scholarly and ethnographic research, the team developed a problem statement, re-envisioned the Professor Garfield content and organizational architecture to position the site as the leading voice in digital literacy education. The prototype you are seeing is the culmination of an iterative user-centered design process. The goal of this semester was to create a framework for the future of Professor Garfield website and to create an accessible intuitive interface for teachers. While this prototype was developed purely from elementary education teacher feedback, future development of this prototype will involve both children and parents. The goal of this prototype was to demonstrate our vision for the future of Professor Garfield. Let's go ahead and get started. So the design of the homepage of this Professor Garfield prototype is designed to show teachers how accessible Professor Garfield is and explain our three pillar structure of play, create, and achieve. So first let's kind of talk about what play, create, and achieve are. Play is where students will be playing existing Professor Garfield content that have been updated for usability and HTML. Upon completing this content, they will then move on to our create pillar, which is our big innovative push to position Pr Professor Garfield as the leader in digital literacy education. Create is when students create content that builds upon the educational game and teaches them digital literacy skills. So let's say that a, the educational game is language arts based, then the digital literacy activity is also going to teach them a digital skill that reinforces the language arts that they just learned. Our last pillar is achieve where students are going to receive feedback and awards as they become digital literacy masters. And you can see, imagine on this page that when a user goes ahead and taps on play, create, or achieve, that a Garfield video or animation can pop up and, dem and explain to teachers what those phrases mean. As you scroll down through the home page, we've made it very simple for teachers to view sample courses, learn about digital literacy, and then provide parents a place where they can go ahead and view their child's work and then resources for the Professor Garfield website. So the homepage is very simple and intuitive, explains what Play, Create, and Achieve are, but then also offers up that content for free without having to sign in. So let's look at Play. Again, we'll have a video in the computer screen that kind of sums up what Play is, but what we've done for Play is we've made Professor Garfield content super easy to access and easy to filter through. Adding a filter system by grade and subject allows teachers to easily filter through the existing Professor Garfield games. Let's say we want to look at a kindergarten module and language arts. You can see how these modules have now filtered through and have changed based on what we've selected. This makes it very easy for a teacher to go ahead and find the desired content that they're looking for. You'll notice that on Fishing to Phonics that there's a red box that says Narrate Garfield. The red box um, signifies the digital literacy activity that pairs with the learning game. So let's go ahead and tap Fishing with Phonics. You're immediately greeted with a pop-up that allows you to continue in playing as a guest. So all Professor Garfield content is free and available without any kind of sign up or subscription. Or if you do want to sign up, there are benefits for both teachers, parents, and students. Students get the benefit of being able to track their progress and earn prizes as they become digital literacy masters. And what's very valuable for teachers is that they are able to track their students' work with a profile, they're able to enroll them into their class list, and be able to engage with them in an open online environment that is safe. So for the purpose of this example, let's go ahead and continue as playing as a guest. You're going to notice some differences later on in the presentation, but one of the more obvious things is that you can immediately see how you go from playing with Fishing the Phonics to creating, which is your digital literacy activity, Narrate Garfield. There's a brief video demo that you can go ahead and view, or you can just go ahead and you can go from play, you can go to from play to create, or you can just go ahead and play the digital literacy activity. We don't want to make sure that you're forced into doing a learning game when you just want to go ahead and have that benefit of learning that digital skill or tool. So that explains how play works. I'm now going to show you create. It's structured in a very similar way where you have the same filtering capability by grade but then you also can filter through by digital literacy. And instead of the red, you're gonna go ahead and see a green box that explains what learning game pairs with the digital literacy activity. Our last main pillar is achieve. 
and Achieve has been structured with two sets of badges. We have Learning Badges and Digital Literacy Badges. Learning Badges are for your traditional subjects, and Digital Literacy Badges encompass the components of Digital Literacy. As students complete different games, they're going to unlock these different badges. When they unlock a certain amount of badges, they will reach Novice, Apprentice, and Master levels. When a student hits this objective level, they're going to then be able to unlock a prize. That could be a Garfield printout or a Garfield origami character. The idea is that it's a Garfield prize that the student gets to print or have be able to access to at home. So let's put ourselves in the position of a teacher who's just gone through the home page and has decided they want to join Professor Garfield. This is a very simple process. We're going to go ahead and select Join, tap on Teachers, and then a big feature that we've added for Professor Garfield is the ability to generate a class code. While many teachers have expressed through our research that the profile process is very painful because students can oftentimes forget their passwords, Generating a class code makes it very simple for a teacher to enroll students into a class list, a feature that is very much desired. So we're going to go ahead and generate this class code, enter in our class information that the students will see, and tap next. And what you're going to, and this is the profile that the teacher will see when the next time they go ahead and sign in. And what you'll notice in the top left-hand corner is that the class code is right there. The teacher doesn't have to go digging around to find this information. It is easily accessible and easily relatable to students. When students enter in the class code, they're automatically populated into a class list. And the class list was a feature that was one of the top things requested through our iterative usability testing on our prototypes for this project. So what we've done for the class list is we've made every student able to be clickable to where you can go to their individual page and view all of their work. But at a glance, we're also offering things that make the page very simple for teachers to use. For example, we can look at the current project the student is working on and then the status of that project. And these statuses have three colors. Green means the student has completed a project. Yellow means that a project has been assigned as homework, but the student has started it, but not fully submitted. And red means that a project has been assigned as homework and the student has not started it yet. So at a glance, you can easily keep track of your class. Let's go ahead and decide that we want to assign a kindergarten language arts module. We're going to go to learning games. We're going to select Kindergarten, we're going to select Language Arts, and then we find Fishing with Phonics. We want to learn a little bit more about Fishing with Phonics, so we're going to go ahead and tap it. We see the description, and notice how this page is laid out differently now that we've signed in and have extra features added to the system. Now, as a teacher, I can choose if I want the whole class to do Fishing with Phonics and narrate Garfield, or if I want to choose certain students, because we know st certain students are going to overachieve and need higher level tasks to go ahead and complete assignments to feel challenged. Teachers can also assign a due date, leave additional notes, and on the right hand side you can go ahead and see what badges the students are going to be unlocking. So let's go ahead and tap assign, and let's say a couple weeks have passed and we're not fully sure what we have assigned. We want to assign a different project but we still we want to check what we've already signed so we're not assigning too much. We just need to go to the My Assignments tab on the left hand side and we can immediately see Fishing with Phonics and Narrate Garfield when we've assigned them and their due dates. One of the other big features that we've added to the teacher profile page is an Open Projects tab. So on the left hand side, if a teacher selects current projects, they can see the work that their students have been submitting or are currently working on. We can scroll down and this feed is organized by time. Through here, we've developed two features, class comments and teacher comments. Class comments are comments between classmates that the teacher also has access to and can comment in. The idea behind class comments is that students can engage in an online, safe, collaborative environment, but having that teacher being able to see those comments prevents issues like cyberbullying. Teacher comments enable teachers to communicate directly to students without having anyone else being able to see those comments, so it's a very one-to-one -one direct message comment. So a teacher can see what students have been working on. If they've had any questions by the number of comments, they can jump in and provide immediate feedback on that learning process. Now let's say I'm a student. I'm gonna go through a very similar, easy login process. One of the great things is that I'm able to select my own character to then become part of the Garfield universe. I enter in my information. Now it's very important if I create a password that my parents ha then have to confirm my password and to supply an email. This allows the parents to not only create an account, but then approve the, um, the fact that the child has an account because a child cannot have create an account without the parental permission. 
I'm going to go ahead and hit next and we're going to be into the class profile page and you'll notice that in this page the class feed is presented first but you can also see on the top left hand side that if I have not entered in my class code I just go right there I enter in the code that Anne has given me or that uh, my teacher has given me and from there that class code I immediately see what class I'm enrolled in and the class code is then there so from here I see that the class feed very similar to the teacher feed I'm able to go ahead and comment on my classmates work ask any questions on my own work if I'm struggling on an assignment let's go ahead and see those assignments that were assigned by the teacher I'm going to go ahead and look at fishing with phonics now, Fishing with Phonics is an already an existing module that exists on the Professor Garfield website. It will be updated for HTML and fixes some usability quirks, but the content is there. So let's go through and play Fishing with Phonics. And now you're going to see that we've been rewarded. We immediately know that, congratulations, we've completed Fishing with Phonics, and now we're one badge away from getting to that um, novice level and unlocking a Garfield prize. But following it up, we can immediately see that we're prompted to move on to Narrate Garfield, which is the digital literacy activity that accompanies Fishing with Phonics, the badges we're going to go ahead and unlock. So let's go ahead and start Narrate Garfield. Narrate Garfield is a digital literacy activity that was designed from feedback from digital literacy experts in the Teachers College at Ball State University. The idea behind this is that students are going to go ahead and select a Garfield comic then they're going to go ahead and read that, narrate that comic while recording audio using a smartphone or tablet device. So you're going to notice that there's a video in the top left hand corner. This video is going to provide students instructions on how to record audio, but not give them a step by step how to, rather nudging them in the right direction so that students can explore as they record audio. And then you'll see that there are going to be instructions below that in print. The first step of Narrate Garfield is selecting one of four Garfield comics. So let's go ahead and select one. I'm then going to record my narration using a smartphone or tablet device and upload it. While we're not completely finished with Narrate Garfield, we're prompted midway through the game, the learning activity, and we're going to be asked a question. Now, this question is completely optional, but answering it will not only unlock us an additional badge, it will also allow us to reflect on the work that we've done so far, so really honing in on what is that learning process. But we're going to go ahead and pass that through. Now the second part of Narrate Garfield is going to add in an additional level, level of creativity. So now those comic bubbles are going to be blank and students are going to be able to select from pre-selected words to make their own Garfield comic. So that from there they get to have that little bit of creativity in making their own comic. They're then going to select the words, fill in the bubbles, narrate their own comic, and then upload it. And then we're going to move on to see that they've unlocked cer certain badges, have reached the apprentice level in functional meaning making, and have a couple more badges to go for critical thinking and creativity, and that they can unlock an online collaboration badge by commenting on their classmates' work. On the right-hand side, you'll see that they've been notified that they've unlocked the Apprentice Award for Functional Meaning Making, and that they'll be able to unlock a prize that they get to keep. This concludes our vision for the Professor Garfield website. We look forward to continuing developing and involving teachers, parents, and kids in the future. Thank you very much.